Sounds like a WWF wrestler. Doesn't he, Jim? He's got the size for it, Fitzy. Triple Z. Can we say triple Z down in Australia? Or you do, do, we, we you do you, Fitzy. You do you. A nice start. Not enough on this volley, though. And he picks the passing shot early, Lehechka. So, I love 30. is that when you come forward, you don't always have to volley into the open court. Quite often, they see a gap, they go there. It's not necessarily the right direction. So early trouble on serve for Jean. 15.40, two break points. Nice save there. Back to Deuce. I was a little bit surprised, actually, that Zhang, when he was kind of ordered by Lehechka to serve first, chose to serve up on the sunny side. That uh, could be a bit of a nuisance for the right-hander this time of the day. But he's taking it on and might uh, escape the challenge. Motion there, left arm fully extended. The ball knuckling into the air, not a lot of spin on that. That's a nice looking motion. So many times you see people that struggle with their ball toss imparting too much spin on the ball uh, out of their hands. You want a, a very still arm as it lets the ball climb into the sky. wide and so two break points saved for team china and an opening hold of serve so it's uh, interesting the serve isn't it it's one of those uh, it's it's the only stroke in tennis where you are totally in control yet it is for some people the most difficult yeah that's right yours truly and uh, and his truly sitting courtside had that issue that's Fitzy. That's you, Fitzy. Look, I was prepared to ignore that, <laughs> that, tr that train of thought, really. But uh, <laughs> I'm confronted with it every day of my life, Todd. So thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Placing and the ball up Major there. winners, both of you. It's interesting for a lot of our international viewers. There is a term in Australian tennis if you don't have the, the biggest serve called cream puff. And... Uh, Pitsy and I had cream puffs. Mm, on the wind predictor right now, slight edge to uh, team checks. No cream puffs uh, from these two players when it comes to serving, that's for sure. <laughs> mm. 
One thing you will notice with Lehechka's serve is it's very mechanical. It's not a fluid motion at all. It's, uh, you can see the effort going into it. Well, it is very similar in a, in a way to the, the, the player that you spoke about before, Thomas Burdick, in, and they've done some work together. So you can almost see he's been taught the same principles that uh, Thomas used to have. Big, strong legs. They, they get used very well in the action. That's what I noticed first and foremost with uh, Yuri last year at the Australian Open. I sat courtside in one of his one of his matches around a 16, I think, and uh, it was the definition in his quads and his calves. So I was sort of shocked for a young, at the time, 20-year-old or young man with legs with this much definition. It's quite uh, quite impressive. beaten for pace. Well, having to change direction there, Todd, affected him a little bit. He's a big athlete. He's, a, he's an imposing figure at courtside. And um, he, as well as he moves, he, he got caught there having to change direction. Might be a, a ploy that Lehesky uses more and more. zone. One of the great factors of this event, everybody's sitting courtside, men, women, coaches are all allowed to give their input. And that's a strong opening hole. We're at one all. A little more comfortable serving conditions for uh, Chung here, serving with the sun at his back and to his left currently. done by Lehechka. Fitted off the offense of Zhang and was able to get that pass down. And then he was up here using some guile. Going behind Triple Z with that one. One of the things that, that may have limited the ascent of Zhang along the way for someone as tall as he is, doesn't have an immense amount of horsepower on the serve. This is that serve is 201 kilometers an hour, not really popping much higher than that. 205 is fastest so far today. When you've got that much height and size, he's, he's not feeble by any means. He looks quite strong. You, uh, you would think you'd be able to pump it around 215, 220, and that makes a big difference in your success rate. Doesn't seem to be using a racket, Todd, that, that gives him a lot of extra power, unlike some other players. That looks more like a control racket to me. Yeah, you're right, and uh, that has a lot to do with the, the, the string pattern. 
more strings that you have in it gives you more control. If you go with a racket that has a little slightly wider pattern, that will give you more speed and more spin. But some players like to be able to feel that they can get more in play. You know, it's, it's, a, it's one of those things that when you grow up with a certain frame, how your game evolves around that racket. Yeah, we hear a lot of the professional golfers talking about how much time they spend uh, looking at their swing speed and looking at the carry and how far they hit the ball and trying to keep up with the Joneses on tour. And you don't hear a lot of tennis players doing that same analysis on should they be serving bigger. That's ah, a great pass. It sets up two break point chances for Lehechka, but finishing off that thought, not a lot of players talking about how do I gain an extra five. 10 kilometers an hour on my serve with the same motion and the same strength by getting different technology involved. That's uh, certainly worth looking into and there. I'm sure there are some that do. This is the time of the year when those changes will have just been made oftentimes in the off season as well. And there's the breaker serve and the Hesker for Team Czech have an early break. 2-1 first set here. Get up close with your player, talk through the strategies, oh, yeah, yeah. get them back on track. Struggled on both service games, managed to get out of the first one for 1540, but broken in his second, John. As Lehechka comes out with the early break, serving here 2 1. First match of day two of the United Cup in Perth. Not the best of volleys, that one, Fitzy.
and misses his mark. Lehechka climbs back to 15.30. Just watching Eiji's serve. He's also a tall, strong fellow. We've told you about that. He also hits his serve around about the same speed as Zhang, and I think there's room for improvement on his serve. What's interesting about Lehechka is, unlike most players, when he lands in the court after his first serve, he's close to the baseline. And then when he lands after his second serve, he's closer to the net. Usually that's reversed. He's going up to his first serve, and then he goes out to his second serve. That's counter to what he should be doing. There's a big opportunity for him to, to make a change with his ball toss and his, uh, his serve to be more effective than it currently is. Oh, great defense on the wide backhand. It's a good shot, isn't it? This two-hander, it, it it's, looks a tiny bit more reliable than his forehand wing. That's not bad either, but uh, this is a heck of a shot for a big man to stretch wide there and make that. He was deep in the court too, Fitzy, in the shadows. It's a chance to get the break back immediately. He's offering up the wide serve here, kind of holding the center of the court is Young. And Lehechka spots that opportunity, but the net robs him of a weak return. Yeah, Todd, I like the way uh, um, you, uh, especially up there, will appreciate the net movement here. He, he, he's coming in on the right uh, shot, isn't he, most of the time. I mean, the backhand a few points earlier was just too good for him, but he's playing the off forehand, making Zhang stretch, and then that usually offers up an easier volley. So he's tactically doing well. Saves the second break point with an ace. First of the match. As Zhang, with his return position, is really challenging Lehechka to hit the wide serves in both courts off the first serve, and Lehechka takes that opportunity nicely to erase the second break point. That was a beauty of a serve. That was his biggest of the match, too. 215K. Backhand's world class, isn't it? Smart serve. Right now, after seeing these few games, there's no reason why on a big point you'd go to the backhand rather than the forehand on the serve. So good choice there on the break point.
Ketchum back in the shadows to return, varying up his return hit points he is at the moment. good on the backhand side from Leheska and he consolidates the break of serve. Very strong footwork here from Niji Leheska. Sees the heavily spun ball, steps into it and unloads on a inside out backhand from the center of the court. Brilliantly done and survives the test of three break points. Forehand's the, yep. the, the worrying side, isn't it, BT? It, it is, and uh, Jim, I haven't seen him live as much as you have, but uh, there's got to be a little bit of doubt in his mind about that wing. He, he, he's made a couple of uh, interesting misses there. Backhand looks as solid as a rock. I know where I'd be telling my charge to where, where to go, I'd be I'd be attacking that forehand a lot more than the backhand wing if you get the opportunity. Well, it's interesting, Fitzy. I've called quite a few of his matches over the last uh, 12 months, and one of the things with his forehand that stands out to me is that he changes his mind mid-stroke about where he's actually going to play the ball. When he's committed to a particular point in the court and he hits it there, he's fine. But you can see him look down the other end, like with peripheral vision, go holding. And then when he does that, he, he mishits the ball a lot. And I think he really needs to be, be more committed to, to patterns of play off that wing. Tomorrow. Zhang will take on, for the first time, the world number one as China faces Serbia in Group E. So Djokovic, a living, breathing legend and a playbook. He will show us exactly how to play this player. He will have done his homework. He will be ready to go. And anytime you get a chance to watch Novak play someone for the first time, you'll learn a lot about the player he's playing. He basically just exposes weaknesses because he has none. <laughs> that was a beautiful return off backhand. Sets up the opportunity to approach into the backhand corner and it brings up another break point for a double break in this opening set. Goodness me, are you kidding? He had a half a court to hit it in the other direction. It was wide open. Uh, pretty clear there in that rally, though. It, uh, when Zhang gets a forehand, it doesn't come with as much pace as his backhand. That, that was a big opportunity for Lehechka to, to put a fork in the first set with two breaks. Gonna have to get back to the cutlery now. Oh. The hardest volley is end to face. The best result. 
This was a great dipping pass and look at him wrap the racket around the ball to get the spin and it hits the court and goes sideways. You'll see how it takes it from his left to right and manages to hold serve, keeps himself in the set. Just down a break, the Hetzka and team check, 3-2. For many of the players, the first time coming to Perth, including for Jim Courier here in the commentary booth. And this is some of the magnificent scenery that you can see. This is Lucky Bay. It's got stunning white sands, clear waters on the Esperance coastline. That's the Indian Ocean you can see coming onto the shores of the magnificent Western Australian coastline. It's one of the whitest beaches in Australia. Have a look at that, Jim. Isn't that magnificent? You're not going to get there this week. It's an eight hour journey there, south of Perth, but well worth doing if you get the time to travel along the coastlines of Western Australia. Don't tempt me with a good time. <laughs> so Hetchko with his captain, David Scotch on the right, his coach, Michael Navratil in the center with the, the mirror sunglasses shaking his head at us. Yes, thank you. Good to see you, Michael. They've done good work together. Marketa Vondrosova just behind Lehechka, the Wimbledon champion, the reigning Wimbledon champion. She'll be up next, taking on uh, Q, as she's known, Chin Wen Zhong. Very talented young Chinese player. That's going to be a good one as well. Time. We well, are watching the United Cup day two edition from Perth, Group E in action. Final member of this group is uh, Team Serbia. It is Leheska coming out to serve with a break at 3-2. Awkward shot there for Yeezy to handle off the shank forehand, but he was quick to move for the drop shot. Saw it coming, and Burns Zhang with the redrop. Nicely done. Again, a basic forehand mistake from the Chinese player. Okay. 
McLean hold a serve. I mean, we've, I think it's fair to say we've been waiting for a, a big Chinese player to come along and, and really go to the top echelons of, of the men's game. We've already had Li Na. Boy, did she make a difference. But I think for this lad to, to get to the next level, Jim, uh, he, he, there is a chink in that forehand wing, and he, he's going to have to fix that. And be, he's not a forehand dominant player, is he? he the backhand is, is really his strength. Yeah, I think the player really to keep your eyes on, Fitzy, to make that big breakthrough in men's tennis for China is Jerry Shang. I think he's clearly tracking towards a very high level. Just 18 years of age, inside the top 200 already. Left-handed, pretty slight at the moment. We'll see how much he grows. Monster forehand from Lehechka. But uh, the youngster, the 18-year-old from China, he left China at the age of 13, currently training at the IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida, where so many players have emerged from. So that's a name certainly to watch. Currently ranked 183. and the body language there after that miss. Now, when I watch him play, as I said off the forehand wing, Fitzy, there are times when I feel that he's not constructing points, he's just hitting balls. That's one of the key things. I think patterns of play for him could be very important of understanding this ball goes here for a certain period of time and really work on that as opposed to just sort of what I would call free hitting anywhere within the court. Yeah, I think that's where you need really good information from the people around you to mm -hmm. people that understand the strategy and and people that don't just expect a hitter of the ball. Uh, it's obvious though, he, he, he spends a bit of time on the practice court up near the net, which I think is a very positive thing. He, he He's a pretty accomplished volleyer. I've seen a couple of loose ones, but... Um, not afraid to come forward as part of his repertoire and, and more often than not he, he finds a way to put the ball away so I, I certainly appreciate that part of his game. Finds an ace to close out the game and it is 4-3 in the opening set to team check. So a ball change here for Hechka. 
And there is the etiquette of showing the new ball to your opponent. He's got the break, 4-3 in this opening set. what can happen with the new ball it flies off the first couple of strikes and with the temperature here today on the rise currently 27 degrees in Perth it's due to hit 36 around about two o'clock this afternoon so uh, a warm summer's day here in the west You say out west like we do in the United States out or do you say in the west I think we say in the west would that yeah. be right Fitzy in the west we are in the west mm -hmm. it's very elitist east coast to say to say out west that's a pretty elite serve not much elitism here Jim fair point speak We're yourself all Fitzy. in the in the booth anyway but uh, <laughs> On the court, that was a high octane first delivery from Lehechka as he tries to pocket this opening set, getting closer to it. 4 3, 30 15. What I have noticed with the new balls uh, already this season is that uh, the first couple of games they, they fly a bit, but they also are, are bouncing high off the court. They're, they're getting up above shoulder height, and as there's as you would expect as they start to get used, that changes a little. Oh, that's huge off the forehand. After dropping the opening point, four consecutive, and it's 5-3 to Team Czech Republic. And following in the footsteps of uh, his countrymen and uh, one of the great players, Ivan Landel, who probably started the trend of changing rackets, changing the restrings after a ball change. Just walked over to his court, uh, over to the pod, and swapped restrings there. This one's a little tighter now because it hasn't been used and should have a tiny bit more control with these new balls that are flying a little bit in the heat. Well, I think in the old days, this might have been good enough, but it's too short, really, yeah, so in think, the modern game, isn't it? Thinking the same thing, Fitzy, because uh, you're talking about the strings there. You see, see that trajectory the ball can get there, how high that was and still lands in the court? If you were playing with a natural gut string, the trajectory just couldn't do that, and that meant that the volleyer would be able to get a racket on ball. Oh, huge second serve under immense pressure. 
short out wide, had the kick on it to jump further wide. save once again from Jean but it is the Hetchka who will come out for Team Czech Republic to serve for the first set 5-4 Not a lot of discussion going on on the team zone for the Czech Republic. Just a little nod of confirmation that you're doing a nice job in control on his own service games for the most part, Leheshke. Is he nodding confirmation or is he bobbing along to the song? <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> Whatever, it's positive. Yes. So, uh, that's the main thing. Uh, Czech team was all huddled up at breakfast this morning in the hotel. Good vibes, and uh, that continues here. Close-knit bunch trying to get off on a, a good start. This second edition of the United Cup. Jung for China coming out. Seeing whether he can break back here. Serving up into the sun as he tries to close out this opening set is Lehechka. Flinches on the first forehand, finds the net. And that was a basic volley, it was an open court. And now he's put pressure on himself. A little snatch on the volley. The racket head crumbles as he makes contact. We'll see it here. I just wonder whether that missed volley in the previous point stopped him coming forward again then. I mean, it was a short return. It was perfectly set up for Leheska there to, to approach again and come in. He chose not to. A triple Zhang, break point. Yeah, Zhang's had three break points earlier in the set, unable to convert any of them, but this time it's three in a row. And he's, he's 
put in his worst performance, hasn't he, on his serve in, in the game that mattered most here so far. to love well the skill set there looked a little wanting didn't it on the on the volleys he wanted to come forward he wanted to finish the points as quick as he could but he made a couple of poor attempts there and I, I, I can't help thinking even these wonderful world-class players just don't develop the skill enough at the net because if they're an all-court player they have to finish the point at the net so often Jong I think has shown more more inclination that he can finish the, the point at the net. So what a turnaround this is. Straight points for Jean. He was well in the point there, Jean, at a very low percentage, pulling the trigger down the line after doing well to defensively stay in the point. Captain Wu Di is coached by a former top 100 player, Rendy Liu. They joined forces about six months ago. Rendy's in the back row in the team zone for Team China. Corner and missed on that forehand. Some real tension coming with the scoreline for the Heska here. First match of a season in an Australian summer can be quite interesting, no matter how hard you have trained in a different environment. Keeping himself in the shadows of the far end. Smothered and covered that forehand and sets up a breakback point for Lehechka. Wow, what a miss, too. It yep. was perfectly constructed, Fitzy. Yeah, I, you know, to, to win these big matches, the, their balls you, you really cannot miss. He's done all this work to get back into the set. 30 all easy forehand, really, by these modern players' standards, and uh, he didn't deliver. Goodness. 
And he gives up the break once again with the double fault. And Leheska will have a second opportunity to serve for this opening set. He leads six games to five. Well, he can raise his eyebrows as he comes back to the team zone. Leheska saying, well, I let him back in and he's given me my opportunity once again. And I suspect he'll play a much better service game when he comes out to serve for it a second time. Yeah, that was a gift of the highest order right there. I mean, all the work that Zhang had done in that first set in a matter of two points. He basically, well, he hasn't thrown it away yet because the uh, Heskin still has to hold serve. But you're right, Todd, he's now serving away from the sun. And it's like a, a second chance, a second life after serving for, for the first time and, and, not, and not, uh, not winning that game. So, look, it's a learning curve for the Chinese player, but, uh, gee, that was a big couple of mistakes there. You can see Michael Navratil, Yuzi's coach, very much engaged here after that sequence of games. And the complexities of this opening set appearing at the end for a team check and the, the coach putting his hands on the steering wheel. coming out to serve for a second time for Team Czech Republic. A long opening set, 52 minutes. Been out on court. Interesting, uh, Fitzy, you, you'll know what I'm talking about here. Peripheral vision. See this lob go up? He hasn't got uh, the awareness that his opponent has taken to the right side of the court. There was plenty just to slide one into the open court. And we saw him miss a forehand the same way a little earlier in the set, which suggests to me that sometimes he's just committed to his only shot, doesn't glance down the other end to see what the opponent might be doing. Well, see, the difference, Todd, this is going to be hard for you to understand, is he has power, so he can just <laughs> go where he wants to, and it's enough. You didn't have that option. Oh, that's magnificent. <laughs> Too easy. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to save power. I mean, keep some in with the battery. You know? Todd, you're in the Hall of Fame. You don't have to make any excuses for anything. Oh, stop pumping him up. Per Come Jimmy on, G. he's my partner up here. i got to balance it out. Yeah, two Hall of Famers up there. That was a, a great play. Credit where credit's due for Lehechka. The sneak attack off the second serve there gets him within two points now of this opening set. Much better this game than the last service attempt. Oh, that's huge. Big ball striking. First ball, this one here. Let's see how deep it was. It gets Leheska falling backwards, just trying to keep it in play. And then he's forced so deep, and another massive forehand was too good. There must be just a slight chink in his technique, though, on the forehand, because. 
you know, the one he missed at 30 all on his own serve at 5 all, there was no reason for that. And, and just occasionally he, he doesn't hit the ball in the middle. He, he makes poorer contact. I mean, at times he, he, it looks a million dollars, but then for no reason he misses it. And it's been costly here. So there it is, the opening set goes away of Team Czech Republic, seven games to five. A little bit of service percentage in the opening set for the player on the losing end of it. Xiong serving 65%. Lehechka just 45%, but winning more points when he made the first serve. Got a little more power. But snatches at that forehand. Now, this is sometimes can be that little bit of an issue. Lehechka stayed sitting in that break while. Jung went off to change his uh, kit. And uh, that's a couple of loose points there that look like the intensity has just dropped a little within his game. Got to get it back on track quickly. I've got to say, his opponent often hands it back to you. Serve there into the body. Gets a weak reply, and he loves that two-hander. Thumps it for a winner. So the opening game, the second set goes the way of Team China. Well, we've talked a bit about uh, Lehechka's serve and how it's a little bit odd the way that he lands further in to the court when he hits his second serve, uses those powerful legs to get up to it. Let's look at where he's making contact with these serves. It's a very close uh, lollipop, as we like to call it here, like, like little balloons or so. The yellow balls representing where he's making contact with the second serve, the first serve. Slightly more to the right, especially in that ad court. A uh, little bit more to the left. The reason you do that is you're trying to hit more of a kick serve so you can hit up on it, hit, put top spin on the ball, serve out to the right. You're looking to do a little bit more of a flat or a slice serve. So it's a pretty good looking collection uh, as far as the ball toss goes. And uh, that's not really what I think is, is an area where he can improve. I think it's more about what his legs are doing and where I think he could maybe maybe take that ball a little bit further into the court on his first serve. He is quite tall. Hit down into the court a little more. Oh. Able to hit it up to 215K. He doesn't lack for power. Precision the problem so far today. It's as if he uh, at times gets stuck underneath the ball, isn't it? So he's not getting that uh, leaning extension. Tell you what, he does have the ability, though, off a more neutral ball that comes to the forehand with not a lot of pace to generate his own pace, and that's a unique talent. 
as we take a look at uh, the win predictor. Not much separating them pre-match with the first set under his belt. The Hatchka at 80% from here to get the job done. Mahesca, you, you direct even more traffic probably to the forehand wing of Zhang. I mean, if you if you can press him in there hard, he will drop the ball short, it seems. He, he, he gets deeper in the court. I'm sitting laterally to his side. And uh, he goes back further and further in the court, and then he drops that forehand in the middle of, near the tee, or in the, the service tee, right in the middle of the court, and then it's an easy put away. Well, his lateral vision is still not working, Todd. No. He just smashed that one straight back to his opposition. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a couple of uh, overheads here. Look, straight down the middle. That was a good little dig, though, from Jung just to get that back into the centre of the court because it gave no angle for a volley. Sets up the opportunity to run down that. Easy to be critical, but he, he, he's still got a bit of work to do on his volleys. Has has got still doesn't possess enough feel on that uh, on that ball when he comes forward, and uh, it'll make a difference as his career moves on. I think just another nuance that he needs to improve to get to the real to the top echelons of the sport. So there's an early break, the way of Team China. Unexpected from the Heske. Two love. And that bounce smash and volley become costly. Certainly impressed with the way he moves. He, he's a big man. He's, he must be 6'4", pushing 6'5", in the old language. And he covers the court and stays low. Good athlete. Well, there's been a, a real drop in the level of concentration 
and uh, the intensity of Lehashka in this second set. And it was noticeable from the very first couple of points. He really switched off when they had that little layover when the Jung left the court and he has to try to get it back going quickly. not really got to do with ball striking it's got to do with concentration levels and that can be when you haven't played a match for a little while And so the door opened for Zhang, and he's walked straight through, and he's got a three-love lead in the second set here. Team Czech Republic take the opening set seven games to five. Well, we had a little look at earlier at Lucky Bay in... Western Australia. This time we're heading to the Margaret River region, just three hours drive south of Perth and some magnificent hiking, great beaches. There's the limestone caves beneath the surface of the Lewin Ridge. Some nice wines too from the Lewin Estate region. And you can explore the Cape to Cape walking trails. For an up forest, it's a rugged coastline, but it is scenic and untouched and magnificent and well worth a visit. So it's been a turnaround here in the second set in Perth here at the United Cup. Yuri Lehechka on top the majority of that opening set. Took it seven games to five. Level of intensity and concentration drops ever so slightly at this level of the game. And your opponent will take advantage. And that's exactly what Zhang of China has done. He's got a three-love lead here. <laughs> Now, one of the interesting things for me, Jim, is to see whether Zhang can actually maintain his levels and not overplay and, and stay with a good, tactical, intelligent game plan here. Well, overplaying is not what has put him in this position. It's that Lehechka's level came down after that long bathroom break that uh, Zhang took. So right now it's about just staying patient and let Lehechka blow himself up, which is what's happening right now. Five unforced errors off of the Czech's racket already in this set. Small opportunities in matches can go unnoticed, and that was one there. A chance at a second serve, 
to see if you could extract another unforced error. And instead, Zhang went for the winner, missed it. And now it's 30-15 rather than 15-30. And that is brilliant from Lehechka. What a half volley that was. Even John Fitzgerald has to applaud to that. No, no, no. Lou Hogue would have been happy with that one, I think, Jim. That was that was an example of incredible touch, which has come out of nowhere for me with him because he he, he absolutely meant that. Does he make that at 15.30, Fitz? Well, that's the question, isn't it? It's the question Jung should have been asking him and didn't. It's not like he meant to miss that four, and he was trying to, to take advantage of a second serve, but that's just lack of situational awareness in my view. That's what Todd was talking about. Keep that level where it is, stay steady. Well, that's one of the things you see from, um, let, let's use uh, Alex Timonor as an example. When he gets an opponent into a, a scenario within a match, he, he's relentless. He doesn't give a free point. He keeps working hard, and that can break an opponent's back that can really send them into uh, deep decline. But if they know that you're willing to give up a free pointer here, it really it changes the mentality for, for your opponent. And that's a, that's a piece for Jung to work on. When he misses that forehand, he misses it sometimes by a long way. That that was as far out as the Perth sign. That's a good 10 feet that forehand missed by. Second ace of the match for Zhong, first of this set. just trying to get themselves into the shade to regroup. This is the first uh, hot summer's day for them to have faced and no matter with the practice in it, when you up the ante with the intensity of a match day, you start to feel the consequences of that. It's just acclimatizing to it. This has been a good turnaround for Zhang. He holds serve and he's got a full one lead for Team China in set number two. Now, Fitzy, you're court tie, but you're now in the shade. You started in the sun, the umbrella's gone down. 
uh, we'll get that from him in a moment. He hasn't got his headset on for the moment. He's chit-chatting away. Fitzy, uh, your headset's back on, talking about um, you're in the shade now, but it is starting to pick up the temperature out on court. Oh, it's a hot morning, yeah. And, uh, look, I, I sometimes worry about these young players who don't wear a hat. I, maybe that sounds a... Sounds little... rather grandfatherly. Well, yes, and, uh, well, there's a good reason for that, because I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, Congratulations but, you know, it, it can one. knock you around. You know, we talked about coming to Australia out of the northern winter and it's it, it's cold up there and they, they've got to get used to this sun quickly. Bit of Tom Jones playing around the stadium, one of Fitzy's uh, favourites. He's not unusual by any means. He's courtside as uh, some young fans out here to support China here today. Good Chinese contingent here at the United Cup. And it's all about representing your country. Todd, some of us are defined by, that, by our idiosyncrasies, you know. That's just life. But I, I do worry about the hat that Yuri is not wearing. And, and you know, it can wear on you. I mean, if he comes to the to the Southern Hemisphere, it's the first match in Australia. It's not a brutally hot day by any means, but it's warm and he'll be feeling it right now. So I don't know whether that's played a part in this in this turnaround. Fitzy, you reckon that the headband's taking care of Zhang? Is that uh, why it's not affecting him? Well, he's got a, a big mop on top of that head. It's a very healthy hairdo and that's just not compared to some of us. We can rent you a mock pitsy for your head. <laughs> that, that would literally be a last resort. <laughs> Move on. We should focus, yes. Temperature here is close to 30, Jim. So, it, and it's a dry heat in in Perth, in the west. And out on the court surface, it would be accentuated by a fair bit, I'd say. Yeah, that's why you see the players retreating back to the shadows, deep in the baseline, in between points, to get a respite. A big can opener, wide serve from Lehechka through the ball toss way out to his right and put a mighty slice on that opening serve. Nice stabilizing service game for the Czech. Good racket work on that first serve. And that uh, will reset and settle things for Leheshka, love service game. Both players hitting the towel box, cooling down. But about to heat up here in the tension department as Young approaches a split, set, a split set opportunity. Just a couple of games needed to secure a third set. Technique, but it, it appears to me, especially sitting laterally here, right, I'm looking sideways straight at Zhang as he makes contact with his forehand. He, he often doesn't have any body weight at all moving forward. Now, I don't know whether that disallows him to have a, a, bit, a more consistent hit on the ball, have the strings stay on the ball a bit longer. But 100% there's correct. Well, there's, 100%. Well, there's too many miss hits on the forehand wing. Well, if you watch his forehand, I, I'm seeing what you're seeing from a different angle. His left shoulder flies open a little too early at times instead of staying on to the target.
did better that time keeping the shoulders closed. Still didn't lean on the forehand, but that also fits he would be a reason that he doesn't get as much power as his opponent does on the forehand. See him going up instead of into the court on that one, just like you described. Yeah, there's no there's not much transference of weight towards the target. Whereas on the backhand wing there is. And it's a beautiful, consistent, solid hit. Good service game, holds to love. And a game away from a set all out here. Team China, 5-2. It's got the feel of a first match of the season flow to it, doesn't it? Yeah, everybody, I'm kind of hitting the ball well. I'm not, I'm not fully sort of understanding, you know, my confidence level. And it just got, it's got the, all the feel of just sort of actually feeling out a start to the season. Well, all, all the practice that you, these players will do it cannot be replicated what you feel in match when the adrenaline hits. Well, it is still 2023, but this is the start of a new season, the United Cup for 2024, underway now in both Perth and Sydney. And it is Group E here in Perth with Team Czech Republic taking on Team China. And it is a tight opening encounter in the men's singles. Heska taking the opening set, seven games to five over Jung. And he's got work to do to stay in the second set as he leaves that team zone. He'll grab the balls there and he will come out to serve at 2-5 to stay in the second set. Fifth, fifth ace of the match for Mahesh Kearney racing through this service game. He'll put a bit of pressure on Zhang to see what he can do if he has to serve this out. He's going to be up the more difficult end, serving into the sun still at this stage of the day. And he does. He holds to love. And now comes a big moment for Team China. Has not been a, a great set of serving from percentage standpoint for Zhang. Under 50% first serves made, so he's lost a bit of rhythm. However, when he has made first serves, he has yet to lose a point in Rhythm. this set. And rhythm's an interesting word there because Leheshka just changing up the flight and the pace in, in the last game. And I think that's a good tactic against uh, Zhang. I think if you can give him a different ball, it makes him, it takes him out of the strike that he wants. I just have a feeling he is breathing a little hard. I mean, there's a bit of pressure probably now. and feels like he's lost an opportunity in the second set. But he seems to be breathing a bit harder.
that's a poor couple of opening points on that game and you're trying to pressure your opponent from Maheshka. has moved around his return position on second serves today. He stood deep for some second serve returns, but that one he was standing in challenging the second of Zhang, who uh, went big with that second serve. 173K tried to finish the point with the serve, and he did just in the, the wrong favor with this first double fault of this set. So a good solid first serve brings the return error and Team Tana with two set points to level this match. set required to separate these two pump of the fist from Zhong and Team China take the second set six games to three Some work to do in that department. Todd, you could, you could help him. He, he, he's too stiff. He, he, it looks to me like he hasn't uh, practiced up in the forecourt enough. And there's a lack of feel on some of these volleys. That was an easy miss. You know, you know I, I find guys. Even watching the young players in Australia these days, they they don't spend hardly any time in the forecourt. Well, I think that was what I was about to say, Fitz, is that if you look at your percentage of practice and you give it 100%, how much are you actually working on the volleys? I think a lot of players would be 10% or less. So you're doing all the work on the ball striking, but you need to actually have the finishing shots to go with it. Yeah. And when you look at the great players of uh, the, the last generation, they've all been great finishes at net. Todd, I think it's, uh, sorry Jim, I, I think it's even more so in the, at the junior level. They, 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 it's probably less than 5% and, and so it's it's not enough. If you, what that does to me is put a ceiling and and, and not allow you to have the, the versatility of a complete player. All right, so let me put a little positive spin on this for, because you guys are a little getting a little too negative Nelly for me right now. There's hope. These guys are still young, relatively. Lehechka, in particular, 22 years of age. Keep in mind, these guys are going to face the GOAT. They're going to face Novak Djokovic in their next matches. And they're going to be facing a player who, when he was 22 years old, was not the volleyer that he is today at 36. His volleys in 2023 were the best that I've ever seen him be. Incredible. You can keep working on things and improving and perfecting your craft. There's room to improve, yes. No doubt, but there's plenty of time as well. Yeah, I think, with respect, I think that's what we're saying. I mean, it, it, yes, he'll get better. He will, but, but he needs to, I think, spend more time at the front of the court because his backcourt game is more solid. He makes less errors. He, he practices back then. It's obvious. So a lot to work on. He's a good player. I like him. I, I, I'd buy shares in him if I could. Good save there. Two break points have come and gone here in the opening game. Wu Zhang, nice little off serve there. Yeah, he was just having to 
altered the ball toss with where the sun's positioned at the moment. Just coming up, 10 minutes to midday here in Perth. Can I say I like what the uh, authorities are doing here at the RAC, the way they're toggling the roof to keep the court in the sunlight and the fans in the shade? Fitzy, I'm sure you appreciate that, but they, it's, it's basically halfway closed at the moment, but yet the playing surface is in full sunlight. Oh, clever. Gee, there's some feel there. Yeah, that, that shot of the sky there through the roof looked a bit like a space odyssey, didn't it? It's, it, it's not only the sunlight um, on the court and the shade on the side, it's air conditioning as well. Jim, I mean, it's cool where mm. I'm sitting here because you get a waft of air conditioning occasionally, but out there they'll be feeling the heat um, substantially more. Yeah, you know, go more than Jung right now. Break point again. Now a second serve opportunity for Team China. Zhang on the baseline looking to pounce. And pounce he does. It wasn't a weak second serve by any means, but it is Zhang who has an early break in the third set. Let's take a look at that return there. He's fully committed on that one. Now changing of the mind midway through the swing path and cements himself in the prime position in this third and final set for Team China. And there's the reaction from the team zone. And there's a shot fits here of the roof and what Jim was talking about, how it's actually uh, probably only a third open at this point. And keeping all the spectators comfortable, which is uh, very nice indeed. It's something that the U.S. Open did uh, this year in 2023. It got exceptionally hot at the tournament for a few days, and they started to protect the players by putting the court in full shadow, actually. They kept portions of the roof open, but they tried to make it a little more playable for the players, less stressful. It probably affects the flight pattern of the ball a fraction too. I mean, in the sun, you'd expect it just to fly a little more, I think. Pride himself on uh, being fitter than everybody else, Jim. Do you think that's a, a, a good thing? Is, is it good for the viewing, or is it when you've still got matches on the outside court and those guys and uh, and the women are going head to head in the brutal conditions? Is that I, fair? I, I think it's it's a good thing in general. I think the game has become so physical and so fast. And I think the quality of the matches improve with that. I think there. There's another factor as well. At the U.S. Open, they have a nasty shadow that comes across the court and makes it almost unwatchable on television. So when you put the court in full shadow, you can actually see the ball for the television viewer. So that's a huge improvement. The, the roof operates differently than this roof. So the, the shadow, uh, it's a little bit easier to control this one, I think, than it is the U.S. Open, but they did manage to do it, and I, I applaud them for it. There's an interesting scenario at Wimbledon this year for the women's final, which was an incredibly windy day in London. And the tournament made the decision to, for the quality of play uh, to close the roof. It hurt uh, on Jabeur that particular occasion. She was a good elements player using the breeze and uh, she had none of that to be able to work with. There was so it's an interesting. Yeah, there's an argument that that sanitizes it. Isn't there? But for now, here in Perth, we have some 
excellent conditions and that is a good hold to serve to consolidate the early break for Zhang for China. Well, we saw the wind predictor had swung to 80% in favor of Lehechka. Look at this, now it's gone the other direction. 76% for Zhang at the onset of the match. It was nearly a coin flip. Now very much in favor of Team China with that break of serve in hand and, and the momentum. Lechka now trying to just get a toehold here in the third set. Well, to hang in that point, Maheshka. A physically demanding point as he hangs back in the shadow. He's on the board with a couple of aces in that service game, Laheshka, but it is Zhang for Team China that has the early break in the third, 2-1. where you have to make sure that the hydration is kept up to the limits, the energy, the food that's required to keep everything on the right track. Concentration levels, energy Surprise levels. Surprised they're not using ice towels on a day with this type of temperature just to keep their core temperature down a little bit on the change of ends. from the team captain for the Czech Republic now than what we saw in the opening set. He's not bopping along to the music just at the moment, Jim, no, as coach, he was yeah, earlier. No, coach Michael Navratil definitely fully engaged now. The captain, David Scotch, on the other side of him, letting him take over, uh, trying to get his man back on track and back on serve as he is down a break here and needs to turn it around. If you're Lehechka, do you go in, OK, I'm going to tighten everything up. I'm just going to see if, what Zhang can do here. Do I let him overplay? What would you be thinking? I'd be thinking I want to see a lot of, of uh, Team China's forehand right about now. There's 
what you're talking about. Oh dear. Well, if there is a ching, excuse me, if there is a um, a weakness in one facet of your game, it'll come back to haunt you, I think, at the wrong time, and let's hope it doesn't continue here. And here is the opportunity to get it back level. Three break points for Laheska. This game could almost win him the match, I think. Zhang, if he can, if he can make a stand here, fight back from this deficit. This, this is a, a potential turning point. The three break points saved. Here's the final one. One other thing I'd say it is if Zhang misses his first serve, Lehechka would be wise to stand deep to return the serve to ensure he gets the ball back in play and challenge the forehand. That's great serving, though, from Zhang to avoid that pressure. Well done. And Jim, you know, the, the psychology of the one-on-one -on -one competition, it, it, I mean, this can have a, a major effect on the opposition as well. Love 40 opportunity. If Yong continues and holds this game, it really will, I think, um, well, it could certainly play a major role in who actually wins this match. going a little deeper to return the second to ensure he makes it. Perfectly played. Got the ball onto the forehand three different times. Well, the first forehand from Jung clipped the tape. Nearly missed that one, then he Makes the unforced error at the third asking, and here comes the fourth break point for Team Check. Can Jung serve himself out of this jam once again? That's the question.
Well, it's a telling moment, isn't it, here? Yeah, it's another example, Fitzy, isn't it, of the discipline on a big point to pull the trigger on a low percentage shot when he wasn't in position. He continues to put some pressure on himself. This is a fifth chance to get the break back. And he gives it up with a double fault, so we're back on serve. And it must be frustrating if you're Zhong, because you know your strengths and your weaknesses, and he's just delivered everything that would, in your own headspace, be going, oh, why do I do that every time I'm out here or I'm in this position? Because that's one of those moments that we could all anticipate it. Even Maheshka would have been anticipating it, and he's delivered it. And now Maheshka with new balls to serve at two all. Good poker face, though, mm -hmm. from Zhang, not really letting on that uh, he's perturbed by the turn of events here, getting back on serve, just right back to work, really. Nice looking forehand there, in the opening point. Marker on serve. Tenth ace. That's long, and what a turnaround from two love down. The Hesker jogs to the team zone. He's got 3-2, third set. Time for us to take it another little tour around Western Australia, this time to Cape Levique. It's north of Broome. That's a long way from Perth up the north coast of Western Australia. It's just at the northernmost tip of the Dampier Peninsula, where you'll see wonderful red rocks, landscape, white sands, camping grounds, and you can escape the stresses of your day-to-day -day life. And there's those beautiful pictures, just you and nature, Jim. Looks tempting. Very tempting indeed. So now comes a point for the Heshkin, where he has had a couple of ebbs and flows with his concentration intensity levels throughout this match. He's been able to turn around a 
love to deficit here in the third. Can he keep the pressure on Jung of China? And seal an all-important first point in this opening match of Group E here at the United Cup in Perth. Both of Zhang Zhijin's parents were athletes. His father, a famous soccer defender for Shanghai Xinhua. And his mother, she was a shooter. And he's shooting awfully well with his first serve in this set. Nearly 80% in play. Pistol, rifle. Unclear, I would say yes. <laughs> That shot. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, you can't volley better than that. I don't think. That was his, that was a 10 almost in difficulty factor here. He's a couple of beauties like this. That short off backhand drop volley. Carving across the ball and parting side spin. Beautifully done. I'm prepared to think that uh, he spent more time up in the forecourt. If he can do that, that's, a, that's an exceptional. He'd be, a, he'd be a heck of a good player, wouldn't he, uh, Jim, if he could just fix that forehand a little bit. It'd make a massive difference for him. Yeah, sure would. That's definitely the weakness. That's uh, his coach, Randy Liu, looking on. It was interesting on that ball there. There's Randy in the middle of your picture there. But uh, his hitting zone on his forehand is always different where, where he strikes the ball. So it's got a lot to do with the, where his feet are. That ball was in front. He, he couldn't get the control that he needed. Sami gets late. Sami uses the, the left shoulder, sweeps out. But for now, at least, that was an important hold of serve. And he levels a three all. Footwork so important in tennis. We talk about foot speed, getting out to the corners of the court and end range and being able to keep yourself in, but also footwork so important about through the central parts of the court so that you do get the ball in that right strike zone consistently. And so many of the modern players do it so well off the backhand side. It's easier to be compact and find that there, but the forehand is different. And that's something that he could really work on. I think footwork patterns to the forehand are huge. Very different from Leheshk. If you watch his footwork, he has great ability to get his left foot, turns it down the court. It allows him to get set. He stays with his body weight forward and down the court. You'll see that's more of an open stance because he's out to the, the sideline. But when he gets a centre ball, he really has great placement and shuffling and small steps. He 
think about when you listen to the sounds of the game and you could hear it there, he misses that forehand, but there was a lot of squeaking going on as he was preparing to get set for that ball. physical point there and Lehechka lets out a huge uh, blow of oxygen at the end of that one as if to say he is pretty gassed at the moment. Real opportunity now for Zhang to uh, reassert himself. Two hours and seven minutes of play but it's more about the temperature than the time. It is taxing out here. And Lehechka seems to be suffering more than his opponent. If you're Zhang right now, this is where playing a longer point would be wise. See if you can extract more pain from Lehechka. See if you can get him to make a bad choice due to fatigue. And he does that. And that was a fatigued forehand. So two break points for Zhang. Serve clock at 20. Both players taking time to get into the shadows. Towel off. Cool down. Lehechka is going to have to move to get this ball in play on time. And this is a big time in the match here. Two break point chances for Team China. Serve clock at four, three, two, one. Oh, and that's helpful. That buys him another 30 seconds or so because they don't restart the serve clock if there's a let. So he can take as much time as he needs here at this vital time in the match. Oh. It was a good return, and it pulled Mahesko right out of court. And he didn't want to be drawn into a long rally again. Finds a special forehand. Saves the first break point. Three chances to get the pass. And Jung gets the break. Once again, it's 4-3, Team China. Well, Fiti from courtside, it would look uh, as if Jung physically feeling a little better than his opponent at this stage of the match, just on two hours and nine minutes out on court. Yeah, I think so. I think I think the cumulative effect of uh, of the warmth. It's, it, I wouldn't call it excruciating heat, Todd, but it is. It's it's looking like it's making uh, Heska a little bit uncomfortable, and and it's been a compounding effect. I think so. Yeah, he's breathing hard. He's he's physically not quite with. Zhang at the moment, I think, and uh, the Chinese player is really starting to believe now he can win this.
But he's already had a, one break of serve in this third set, Chung, and he led to love, played a loose game at the end that he's about to come up to serve once again. But that was a very good break of serve there at 3 all because Leheska had reasserted himself in this match. He sure had. But, uh... Zhang was ready for the physicality when he needed it most, and Lehechka wasn't able to stay in the longer rallies, opting to serve in Bali on that last break point in an effort to shorten the point, and it ended up leading to a forced error on the volley and a break of serve. So can Zhang serve it out from here? Let's find out together. That's an important point for Zhang, that one. I haven't got the cumulative data in front of me, but I've done a few of his matches, and it's at these times when he's serving and he has breaks, the first point for him is so important. When he goes down love 15, he plays a completely different type of game. He gets it tight. He, he gets... Uh, he, he doesn't go to patterns. He, he has wrong shot choices, but when he gets ahead in the game, he's much better at it. which would tell you that there is a little bit of panic. An anxiety that he can get when the scoreline gets to this point, Fitzy. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of him approaching with that double-handed down the line because it, I think he can use that ball to open the court up but, but probably stay back. And then if he's going to come forward, come hit it wide to the back end and go in. I mean, he, he gave Leheska there a chance to run at a forehand. It's not the first time he's done that. Be, be, be wary of that. Yeah, he's got he's got pretty good feel though. And that's clutch. And he's got everyone up in the team zone. And Team China, they are pumped up, looking to get a 1-0 lead, get the first tie under their belt. Three matches to play today. Women singles to follow, then a mixed doubles. That's a very valuable free point off that missed return for Zhang. De-stressing this game at 40-15. Well, Hetchka back in the shadows trying to find some oxygen. Seals that with an ace and a game away for Team China, 5-3. And Lehechka appearing fatigued due to the heat is, is not really an, an indictment of lack of fitness. It's more a reflection of the first brutally hot day his body has seen for a very long time. And it's very difficult for your body to acclimatize in these conditions. It typically, from my recollection, Todd, took me about four to five days to get used to these types of conditions and for the body to be able to withstand it. Totally normal what we're seeing right here, and it is not fun, I can tell you from firsthand experience. You mean to say all of those years we watched you in the heat, we it was a bluff, Fitzy. You, you did, Total bluff. You didn't enjoy the, the heart rate coming through the top of your head? Only if my in point, if you guys were enjoying it less. <laughs> you don't have to be the fittest. You just have to be fitter than the other player on the other side. I swear I've never, ever associated you with bluff before, Jim. Never. Let's, let's go play some poker.
Oh, this is a good surface game from the Heshka to keep the pressure on his opponent. Stay in the match. And a love game it is. And can Zheng serve this match out for Team China? We'll find out after the break. He has 5-4 final set. So now comes the mental part of the tennis extraordinary you can be so close to victory yet you can feel the nerves and tension of finishing it off it's the great thing about the scoring system of this sport you can be down and out but you still have an opportunity yep. to recover yeah no lead is safe in tennis you have to win that final point can't run the clock out Last words of encouragement. Coach Navratil to his student, Maheshka. And I'll tell you, as I alluded in the previous service game, which the first point here, absolutely crucial to how the result may play out. Chinese supporters getting behind their man. Big opportunity. First meeting for these two. Zhong surfs for the match. Couldn't have asked for a better opener. Continues to hit his spot. 75% of his first serves in play this set. A couple more might put him over the line and in the winner's circle. Can Lehechka challenge the forehand? Gives away a forehand instead. That's how he got the break back earlier in the set was by asking Chung to hit lots of forehands. He couldn't hold up two unforced errors and a double fault led to the break back, but an unforced error from Team Czech puts them in peril here. Love 30. It's going to go up and challenge the second serve. Is Lehechka. And that forehand hits its mark, and it's triple match points. yet taking his time second match point for team china And he finishes it off with a touch of class. <laughs> Team China take the opening singles point here with a three-set victory for Zhang over Leheska. Six games to four in the final set. An opening match of the season for Triple Z. And he gets uh, A's for that performance. Well played. 
fitness levels holding him in good stead in the end and a terrific opening to that final game led to a perfect conclusion. How about the finesse to finish it? Well, there was uh, three backhand volleys that uh, stood out in that match. Two of them, he went the other direction and then he finishes off cupping a little delicate cross-court drop volley and under pressure of a match point. That was a fine shot indeed. And that sets up an interesting women's singles clash in our next match. One zero. Bravo, Wimbledon champion, Wanda Silva, up against Zhang. Yeah, Chin Wen Zhang, the 19th ranked player in the world against the Wimbledon champion. That is a, a tasty treat ahead as well. And John Fitzgerald giving his congratulations. Let's pass it down to, to Fitzy. It's all yours. Thank you, Todd. Yes, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think we're seeing a little bit of an emerging star here in the men's uh, in the men's game. Zhang, well played. Gee, that was uh, impressive. May I call you Triple Z? Sure. Okay. Great. I like it. You like it? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> That was an impressive match. You, 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 you weren't at your best at the beginning, but you found a way to, to come back into the match. Yeah, um, uh, I'm so happy that today my emotion was controlling very well. Even when I lose in the first set, I didn't get upset. And also um, second, uh, no, third set, I got a break back. I still keep calm and then keep to the end. That's uh, very impressive for me. Yeah. So normally you're not as calm as that because it looked very normal for us to watch you. You were very calm and you handled the pressure well. Uh, sometimes not, but uh, I'm, happy to, uh, I'm happy that you see I'm uh, very calm. Yeah. Well done. And, and you have a very strong team here. And, and, and you're very much a, a strong team, aren't you? you? You have a lot of support with your players here. Sure, of course. I mean, uh, everyone is here. Look, all the China team are here. I mean, uh, thank you for them to support me and also the fans. I saw a lot of fans. Thank you, all of you guys. And, and what about the coach? We've, we've seen Randy here a lot of times in Australia. He, he knows what he's talking about, huh? Yeah, yeah. We had uh, so many people to give me opinion. One, two, three, four, five, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's too many. You also have a very good partner. Your, your lady player is very strong. She's number 15 in the world now. Can, we can call her Q, right? Queen, Queen, Queen is better. Oh, Queen is better, okay. Queen is better. You must have faith in what she can do now. Well, I believe her, uh, I believe her is more than believe in myself. <laughs> you, you should start believing more in yourself, uh, Triple Z. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to have you in Australia. I think we're going to really enjoy you this summer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Don Fitzgerald there with a uh, great little interview with Triple Z, as he, uh, you alluded to, his nickname. And uh, yes, he does like it. He's got a bit of personality about him, there's no doubt. And he has put his country into a positive start here for the beginning of Group E. As we take a look at the match summary, Jim. Yeah, well, it's... Uh it looked at the beginning, you know, the, the match predictor was right. It was a, a coin flip, and it really did go back and forth, back and forth. The unforced error count higher for Zhang, but he was able to manage himself beautifully at the tail end of that match, hang in there, extract some pain from the legs and lungs of Lehechka, who just wasn't able to stay in the rallies and make the, the kind of patient decisions that put him back in to that third set after he broke back. So. Uh, a terrific contest. What a way to get uh, Saturday started here in Perth. Can't wait for what's to come.